Okay, hi there. Welcome to a macro video where we will look at the aspects of the economics of countries running a budget surplus. So what is a budget surplus? Well, it's when a government is taking in more tax revenue from taxes such as income tax or corporation tax or VAT than they spend in any given year. There's more money coming in in tax than government spending. And it's also known as a fiscal surplus. We can measure it in terms of dollars, uh, pounds, euros, etc. in nominal terms. Oftentimes we also measure it as a share of a nation's national income. And sometimes we look at the structural budget surplus, which takes into account the impact of the economic cycle. Now here's the most recent data on the budget balance for the UK. And you can see that the size of the fiscal deficit or budget deficit has been falling in recent years with a projected shortfall of tax revenue overspending of just under 30 billion pounds in 2018-2019. Budget surpluses in the UK are fairly rare. The last one happened nearly 20 years ago. But some countries do run sizable budget surpluses. Here are some examples you might want to use for your exams. Kuwait has a surplus uh, this year of more than 10% of their GDP. Norway will come to in a second or two. Very large fiscal surplus. So too Hong Kong and countries such as Germany, New Zealand and Switzerland also take in more tax than they spend. Greece, interestingly, now runs a primary budget surplus as well. Please remember to avoid confusing a budget surplus with a trade surplus. OK, trade refers, of course, to exports and imports of goods and services. So Norway uh, recorded a government budget surplus equal to 7.5 percent of the country's GDP in 2018. It's a small open economy, of course, transformed by the discovery of oil and gas on the continental shelf almost 50 years ago. And Norway is still benefiting from this very strong flow of oil and gas revenues, which then leads the country to run a dual fiscal and current account surplus. And you can see that surplus is pretty strong from year to year. That said, strip away the annual dividend from petrol and gas tax revenues and the non-North Sea oil and gas fiscal position for Norway probably wouldn't look quite as strong. So why might a country run a budget surplus. Let's think about the circumstances under which that might happen. The main circumstances when there are very strong tax revenues coming in, perhaps employment is high, people's incomes, per capita incomes are going up, and oftentimes countries are the recipients or the beneficiaries of the tax from the profits and rents from natural resource exports. Typically, uh, a budget surplus happens during a period of strong economic growth. Tax revenues go up from both direct and indirect taxes. Uh, fiscal drag can kick in. That's where people's incomes rise quicker and that uh, drags them into paying higher tax rates. And when the economy is strong, then welfare spending typically falls, particularly as unemployment declines. However, and I think if we think back to the example of Greece, which is now running a fiscal surplus, uh, a budget surplus can also be the consequence of a long period of fiscal austerity where taxes have gone up and there have been deep cuts in, in government spending to, to move the, the fiscal position from deficit to surplus. So what are the advantages of having a budget surplus? Let's just run through one or two points. Uh, one, a surplus allows the government to repay some of their existing national debt. And if that's the case, then typically the supply of bonds goes down, the price of bonds goes up, and that brings down the yield on a government bond, which might make future government borrowing less expensive. Running a surplus, particularly in good times for the economy, uh, can give the government some freedom, some scope for meeting a future crisis. So, for example, they could decide to inject a fiscal stimulus to the economy in response to a downturn or perhaps a negative economic shock. Another approach, of course, could be a government could use the budget surplus to cut taxes, perhaps to stimulate the supply side performance of an economy.
Perhaps surplus revenues in one or two years cumulatively could then be used to fund an increase in public sector infrastructure spending. Norway, we mentioned already, they've used their strong tax revenues, their fiscal surpluses, to invest in a national investment fund. And it now has the biggest sovereign wealth fund in the world. These are the largest sovereign wealth funds globally in the summer of 2019. And I've highlighted Norway at the bottom there, which has a, a sovereign wealth fund in excess of a trillion dollars of assets. And other countries, including Kuwait, UAE, Singapore, also have significant sovereign wealth funds. Uh, we mentioned that uh, surplus countries often can use some of their money to pay back national debt. And again, here are some countries with the lowest national debt in 2017. Make sure there's a share of their GDP. Hong Kong and Macau have virtually no government debt whatsoever. To evaluate, uh, these arguments are useful when coming to an evaluative assessment of the economic impact of a fiscal surplus. So what are some of the possible drawbacks of a budget surplus? Well, from a Keynesian point of view, if the government is taking out more tax from the circular flow than it's putting back in, that's a net leakage from the circular flow of income and spending, which could, in theory, have a deflationary effect on GDP. And if your budget surplus is the result of a prolonged period of fiscal austerity, that can have damaging effects on the quality and the accessibility of key public services. Indeed, the burden of austerity may well have fallen on families least able to cope. So there might be an increase in inequality. And there's nothing necessarily automatically good about running a budget surplus. In the same way, there's nothing inherently wrong about running a budget deficit. Much depends on why you might, you might be borrowing the money. You might be running a deficit to stimulate the economy during a downturn, or perhaps to increase important and much needed infrastructure spending to improve the growth rate. And finally, there's an argument for some of those surplus countries for saying perhaps they should be doing more if they're running a fiscal surplus to stimulate their own economy, perhaps to help other nations inside a single currency area. I'll finish with this slide. It's this highly topical debate happening within the European single currency bloc. The question is whether should fiscal surplus countries such as Germany and perhaps the Netherlands, should they be doing more by way of a fiscal stimulus to kickstart spending, demand, output, incomes and jobs uh, in the single currency area because that's facing a downturn in 2020. So should the surplus countries be spending more, perhaps especially when monetary policy might have become ineffective in, in stabilising and stimulating demand and output. So lots there to think about in terms of the economics of a budget surplus. Typically, uh, exam questions tend to focus on budget deficits, but uh, this time we've taken a slightly different approach.